Welcome to the Seven Figure Builder Show. My name is Julie Baranek, founder of Seven Figure Builder, where we help high achieving CEOs free up time with gorgeous automations to scale their business to seven figures and beyond. And I'm here today with my friend, Ben Jones. Hey, Ben. Hey, hey, good to be here. Thank you for having us on, Julie. And um, hopefully we can help as many people as we can in our conversation today. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to have you on today. So where are you in the world right now? I am located in Perth, Western Australia. So it's like on the West Coast of um, Western Australia, kind of where California would sit in the United States, if that makes sense. Um, yes, it does. Yeah. So so over there, a bit down, down under, joining you from your future, which is kind of exciting. Very cool. And for those that don't have the pleasure to meet you yet, can you tell us just a little bit about what you do with your business? Yeah, sure. So I run two, well, two businesses um, that I speak publicly about. One is uh, Titan Marketer, we help businesses scale with YouTube advertising. We've generated, you know, um, multiple seven figures across a very wide range of industry and revenue with YouTube advertising. Um, and then the other business I run is Youth in Business, where we teach kids how to start businesses before they finish school, which is pretty fun. That's amazing. And I want to hit on both those topics for sure, because I love both of them. But we'll start with uh, YouTube. So tell me about YouTube ads. Like most people, when they think ads, they think Google ads or Facebook ads. I don't think a lot of people really think about YouTube ads. So how does that work? And why would that be an option? Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. People don't think about YouTube ads. I mean, the the cool thing with YouTube ads is I think in the United States at the moment, only 8% of businesses are running YouTube ads, and a lot of them are corporates, right? So YouTube's probably where um, Facebook was a decade ago or when search was back in, you know, the early two thousands or email was back in the nineties. Right. So it's, it is out there. It's probably a little bit bigger in the last couple of years than it's been prior to that. But if you were to think about it as a curve, like it's very much at the beginning of an, adop- an adoption curve, you know, and the barrier to entry of people creating video and stuff, people think of that as hard when let's be real video ads are here to stay. So, um, so that, that's why YouTube ads. I mean, this, the other thing is it's, depending on which month you look at it, it's either a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger than Facebook. So it literally has you know, billions of users, like half the planet on it. Um, you know, it's overtaking cable television networks and and TV and the way that we consume content. So, you know, in terms of who you want to target and how you want to get out in front of people, it's just probably one of the biggest opportunities um, right now to get in while the, while, the, while the getting is good. I mean, at the moment, Google's literally giving away $500 to anyone who starts a new Google ads account, which you run YouTube ads from. Um, when was the last time Facebook gave anyone $500 to get a start <laughs> on their platform? Right? So. No, they just take it. <laughs> <laughs> so how does the cost per click, not to get too techie right away, but the cost per click on YouTube compare to Google or compare to Facebook? Yeah, so the cost per click, um, let's do it compared to Facebook. So Facebook will get some of the, you can get some really cheap like, leads and stuff with Facebook lead ads, um, you know, like as much as I want to throw rubbish on Facebook, like that is a good strategy. <laughs> um, the only thing with that is the quality of leads suck, right? So, um, and the targeting that you're going to get from Facebook versus YouTube is like Bambi versus Godzilla and Facebook is not the Godzilla in that equation, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the cool thing is um, the cost per clicks are comparable, if not cheaper to Facebook, depending on how dialed in your targeting is. So, You know, if you want to get really dialed in targeting, you'll pay more per click. If you want to just match broad versus broad, YouTube will usually be cheaper than Facebook. Um, Now, comparable to search, however, uh, if you were to compare YouTube to search, YouTube is way cheaper, like, you know, a quarter to a third of the price cheaper than search ads. So, um, and the cool thing with that is you can literally, you know, if you want to run search campaigns, you know, you'll run a search ad at Google search ads and your ads will pop up in the top you know, three to five results of Google search. What's really cool is you can actually target those same people searching those same keywords on Google, but instead show a YouTube ad at a quarter or a third of the price. And you're not up the top competing with three other people. You're literally just a video ad in front of one user. So yeah, heaps of cool stuff in terms of like the cost per clicks and and the lead quality that you get from YouTube versus any of the other platforms is pretty much unparalleled. So yeah, and you mentioned targeting. So how specific can you get with targeting your audience? Oh, man. So like if you take something like Facebook, because a lot of people who come to YouTube are coming from Facebook. Usually they're like fed up with the platform, they're burning money and whatever. And um, what a lot of people do is they start just running their YouTube ads, the way that they're doing their targeting on Facebook and they bring it over to YouTube and they've just missed probably the biggest opportunity ever. Um, for example, we call it like a, a genuine interest. Facebook's really great at like targeting people in that top layer, like, 
you know, their demographic, like a woman who's 35 who likes surfing chocolate and cats, like you can target <laughs> that, right? right, on Facebook. And that's amazing, right? Now, what where that's different is, so you could target that same woman on YouTube. However, now you can target her by income. So does she sit in the top 10% of income, the top 20, 30, 40, 50% of income? Now, that's a really huge deal because one of the biggest objections that you get in any sales conversation is, oh, that's really great, but I just can't afford it. So imagine taking all of that out so you're only dealing with people who can afford your products or services. Like that alone is next level in terms of your marketing for targeting, right? Um, On top of that, what you can do in YouTube that you can't do anyone else is target by intent. Okay, so target people searching for keywords, right? And then watch a video ad. You can't do that really anywhere else. Um, And both on Google search and YouTube search. But you can do some other cool stuff like ethically hijack your competitors' traffic, right? (laughs) This is like my favorite thing to do of all time. So this is where you would literally find your competitors' URL. So, you know, literally the website of your competitors or like an industry blog or like whatever, anyone who goes there, like we like to do, um, you know, if you're a six or seven figure business owner and you're looking for that high quality client, a great way one to do is to target uh, people who have, or business owners who have CRMs, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you're paying a thousand dollars a month or $500 a month for a CRM, you're a decent sized company, right? So we'll target people who visit websites of CRMs, but what you can actually do is not only target the main one, like, you know, keep or Salesforce or HubSpot or something like that. You can target the actual log on page. So anyone who's logging into these platforms to show them the ads, right? So you're getting right in front of the the cool person. I mean, let alone that or just showing your ads to people who visit your competitors' websites um, is incredibly cool. So that, oh, one more thing, one more targeting. I could talk about targeting all day. <laughs> the, other, the other cool thing about targeting um, is you can target anyone's YouTube traffic, right? So pick, insert your favorite YouTube channel or video here, okay? So let's just say I'm in the coaching consulting space and, um, I want to show my ads to anyone who's watched like Tony Robbins or Grant Cardone or Marie Folio, any, any of those channels. Maybe I just want to do like a playlist that I have on their channel about a certain topic. I can show my ads directly to those people. Um, and, you know, these people are creating channels, creating traffic, all of that. And then you can just come in and, and siphon the exact right people straight into your business. So pretty cool. That's, that's just that, a, like, honestly, that's like a tip of the iceberg. So I believe it. And that it's incredible how you can get so specific and yet reach so many people like these big names are spending so much money on ads and you can kind of tag on to that and, you know, target their same audience is hugely powerful. It's really fun. Um, another thing you can do is I find your competitor, like type in a search, like let's say you're a chiropractor, right? You would say chiropractors near me, or let's say that you're um, you know, a pharmaceutical company, I think you were talking about them before, right? Like that sells a certain type of drug or whatever. So you can actually go in there and find like the people who are advertising at the top top of Google, click on their landing page and then literally grab that landing page that they're paying to send traffic to and then say, I want to show people ads who visit this landing page. And then you can do it with YouTube. So these people are paying for traffic at like three times the price you are and you can run a YouTube ad and hit those same people with a video ad without competing with anyone else at a third of the price than they're paying. So there's some pretty cool stuff you can do. It is because you're targeting the people just going to that page. They're targeting people based on a whole criteria. So your competition is way less for that particular page than they're actually paying to get people to that page, right? Yeah. So you're literally siphoning off like the ideal clients. They're spending all the money to figure out how to target and you can just like piggyback on that. So that's, amazing. that's pretty cool. So yeah, you certainly can't do that anywhere else. So. <laughs> no, you can't. And you mentioned intent. I think that's important to think about. Like so often when we're using Facebook to target and to market in your ads, people are there to be entertained. And our goal is to grab their attention and kind of pull it off of Facebook. But YouTube is one of the biggest search engines. And I think so often we forget that. We think of it more of an entertainment platform. Like what do you find with that, you know, as far as the importance there? Oh, I think, you know, you've just nailed it. So um it, also Facebook's quite interruptive, right? Like the whole point of the ad is to interrupt you while you're scrolling. So you're scrolling through, you know, looking at like what people had for lunch and cats or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and then an ad pops up to try and, you know, grab your attention. Whereas on YouTube, people are going there to be educated or entertained. Okay. Um, and to just talk about like the search side of it. Uh, so the biggest search on the planet is Google search. 
the second biggest search engine on the planet is YouTube, okay? Now, if you got every other search engine like Yahoo, Bing, Asta Vista, you, all those other ones, you joined every other search engine together other than Google, YouTube is still bigger than all the other third-party search engines, right? Um, and Microsoft's spending, I don't know what Bing's worth, but literally lots of money trying to get that up out of the ground and Yahoo and all of that. And YouTube just smashes them because people want to watch video content instead of reading blogs these days. And a very, very high percentage, and it changes all the time, of the searches that happen on YouTube start with how to. So one of the coolest things you can do with YouTube ads is literally just run your ads to people who are typing in how to solve whatever problem your business solves, right? So if I'm in weight loss, like how to lose weight, if I'm, you know, um, a happiness coach, you know, how do I find more meaning in life? You know, if I'm a whatever, right? So whatever they're searching, you're able to just grab that key phrase they're searching in YouTube and show ads to people searching that stuff, which is super powerful. So, um, yeah, so, and and that's the intent side that you're just not going to get. And, you know, it's really finding the person, we call it, who's ready to buy, right? So the the first big objection I talked about earlier was, hey, look, that sounds fantastic. I can't afford it. And you can overcome that with the the targeting of the income. The second big objection is, oh, that's fantastic. It's just not the right time. Now, the other thing YouTube allows you to do is overcome the it's just not the right time objection by finding people who are literally searching or looking for a solution to the problem that you have. And that's that's the power of intent, if that makes sense. It does, totally. So what type of content would you suggest for people to put in their ads? Like, would you create those how-to videos or what would really work the most? Yeah, so at the moment we're finding, um, well, they've got the emergence of YouTube short ads, which are coming in now, well, been in for a little while. So there's probably two types of ads you want to run. So one is like that minute long or just under minute long, like long format on, you know, on your phone, YouTube mm -hmm. ad. And literally all of our ads that we shoot and probably 90% of our clients shoot are all on their phone, right? So you don't mm -hmm. need, you really don't need some ridiculous video filming thing to make this work, right? Um, now, in terms of the ads that you want to do, it's it's real simple. We have a four-part YouTube ad structure. It's basically a hook because you've seen the ads on YouTube. As you're watching them, you've got five seconds to skip, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the hook. What you say in those first five seconds are really, really important. Um, probably one of the best hooks we've found are, are getting them to say yes to something. Like, are you sick of burning money on YouTube ads? Well, yeah, yeah. Right? So. <laughs> You know, you get you get them straight off the front end, okay? Um, so that sort of question is good, but any sort of benefit, big problem, relate to them in some way, you know, that's a sort of hook you're wanting. Um, then after that, we have an elevated pitch. Now, the other cool thing about YouTube ads uh, is, depending on which way you run them, is you can actually get the first 30 seconds for free. Wow. Which is cool. Yeah. So, like, on Facebook, you're lucky to get the first 15 seconds free. So you literally get, like, twice the amount of time to get your message across, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why we have in the next part, we have an elevator pitch that talks about a bit of credibility, about how you can help people, what it is they're looking for. And you have a very, you can have a small call to action or not. Um, but that's really critical because you're able to get a lot of your message across in that first 30 seconds, right? Before you're even charged. And then you have after that, the third part is the story. So this is where you tell a story about something they don't know that might help them add value in their way in, in their life around what it is that you offer and, and actually help people. I think Frank Kern said it the best, like if you, the best way to help people is to actually help people. Right? Exactly. So, so, um, so yeah, so in your, in your story part of the ad, like help them in some way, deliver value. That's so important. This is not an interruptive salesy video ad that you'd have on Facebook because the reason people come to YouTube is for entertainment or education. So help them in some way. And then at the end, say, hey, look, if that sounds interesting, you know, close. And that's the fourth part. So there's four parts. Hook, first five seconds, elevator pitch, story, where you, you know, make sure you help them and then close, right? So that's a four parts. And you can break that up into um, a one-minute ad. We usually find the ad should be around a minute and a half to two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, if you go to our website, we actually give a whole bunch of free resources and script writing templates and everything that's going to give you all of that for free. Um but yeah, it's it's a pretty cool way to structure your ad in a way that's going to help people and gets really good results on uh, YouTube. That's amazing. And that's a lot to fit into a minute to three minutes or two minutes rather. <laughs> there is, there is. But we have a full checklist. You can like tick it off mm -hmm. as you go. Um, but yeah, it's 
the, the, what you say in the ads and the structure of your ads for YouTube is probably one of the most important things. And it's not, it's not the creative side. Like it's not having the best video. It's really not. It's what you say in the ad. I mean, think about most of the the content that you see on YouTube. It's not TV studio content. It's literally like people like me and you, Julie, just sitting here talking on our mics to the screen, delivering value to people. Well, guess what? Your ads should probably be similar to that. Yeah. And that's really what resonates with people. Like I think we've gotten so tuned out to those professional quality things and people just crave real connection, real people, you know, realness. And so the more real you can be, I think it really, that hooks people more than the professional grade quality. Yeah, no, it really does. And and people are looking for that authentic connection, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. 100%. So if you could travel back in time to the beginning of your business with the things that you know now, everything you've learned through the years, what would you do differently? What would I do differently? Um, spend more on ads. <laughs> <laughs> Start YouTube ads sooner. <laughs> yeah, well, well, not just, or well, probably back then there was, like YouTube ads wasn't really a thing, right? So mm-hmm. probably would have been like search ads when that was a, when that was a massive thing. But, um, but here's the thing, like in your business, this bit's really important. Like everyone's like, what's the one thing you should measure when you're running ads in your business, right? There's probably two and I'll, and I'll explain why. The first one is, return on ad spend. That's the one thing that rules them all, right? If I spend $1 here, how much should it turn into? And if your business model doesn't allow what we call a three times return on ad spend, so for every $1 you spend, you're not making $3, you actually don't have a a business that can pay for marketing, Mm -hmm. okay? So every single business from McDonald's to uh, the Super Bowl to you name it, they've figured out a way, um, any department store that you see, to pay for an ad that literally gives them a minimum three times return on, on ad spend. So if whatever system you're using, whether it's lead gen to a sale, whether it's e-commerce, buy off the page, whether it's coaching, consulting, webinars, virtual events or live events or you know book a call strategies, whatever they are, right? If they don't have a minimum three times return on ad spend, stop, have a look at your sales process and fix it, okay? Um, because you can burn a lot of money. But here's the thing. If you can get a minimum three times return on ad spend and your sales cycle is, say, less than a month, which in most businesses, the sales cycle could even be that day or that week, but let's say it's a month, right? Um, For every dollar that you spend, if you get $3 back inside a month, where else in the universe can you do that as a return on ad spend, as a return on your money? Like you're not going to do it in a bank. You're not going to do it in real estate. You might do it on some weird crypto coin, you know, (laughs) if you're lucky. Before it crashes. Yeah. But realistically, on there's no other place out there in the world that you're going to be able to get that sort of return that quickly. Um, so for me, I probably would have, if I was going to go back and tell my younger self, like what would I do differently? I would figure that a bit out quicker and I would spend more money on ads, profitable ads and grow on scale and not worry about having everything be perfect in the pursuit of perfection. I think we lose, mm-hmm. you know, we, we cost ourselves a lot. So um that's probably what I would say. So, Awesome. And thinking about that journey, what brought you here? Like what, how did you get started in this? In YouTube ads? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so YouTube ads. So basically, um, how did you tight market happen? So basically the way that it started was uh, I was running youth in business. Um, I'll probably go back a little bit further than that. Before sure. I was running youth in business, I was doing like property investing. I just left my job and I got into that. And then um my brother talked me into buying a whole bunch of online businesses. I think we bought 30 or something the first year. Wow. So I had to I had to figure out very quickly how to market online businesses, right? <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, we made some money. Aaron, my brother, he sold everything up, went traveling, and I was like, well, what do I do now? And that's where YouTube business started. Because uh, I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm passionate about helping kids start businesses. Um, but then what happened is I was doing that, and then because I still had some other businesses, I was doing you know, that sort of thing, and, you think business got me speaking on stages. So I got to meet a lot of other speakers and um, they're like, Oh, what are you doing with your marketing? It's working quite well. And then next thing I know, I'm speaking on people's stages about marketing. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to have an agency. I don't want to do stuff. I can just help you guys out. And this is what you do. Right. So then all of a sudden I'm, you know, I've got like six figure business friends that are like, Hey, can you help us with that marketing and we'll sort this out? And it sort of happened a bit organically. And um, so we did. And then we sort of, COVID, well, just prior to COVID, about a year before, like people were saying, how do we do Google ads? How do we do YouTube ads? Because I got really frustrated with Facebook and moved away from that. 
oh, I don't know, years and years ago now. Um, because basically I kept shutting my accounts down. The the costs were going through oh, the roof. Yeah. I could I could really see the writing on the wall. Like this is not going to end well. Like look at you just have to go back in history. Like look at what happened to Google search ads. You know, you got super pricey, super expensive. Now any of the big players are there. It's exactly what's happening with Facebook. And I sort of saw up writing on the wall as like, man, I got to get out of here. I've lived I've lived through the SEO thing and I've lived through the you know, the um, Google PPC and now it's Facebook's like, you know, in the same space. Yeah. And, you know, great for Facebook because they've been able to get a whole bunch of people and they're still making heaps of money. Everybody's winning, right? Um, so, yeah, so we moved over to Google Ads and I was actually promoting one of my youth in business events and we usually get like seven, 800 people in a room for those. And um, we booked the room. We only had like you know, 100 people and I had to fly to China for some business and um, I was flying to China and I was like, what am I going to do? Facebook shut all my accounts down, like across a couple of businesses. Oh and I was like, my whole business is going to crash and I'm going to China, the one place you cannot check Facebook or Google or anything. Um, and this is kind of before VPNs and that really big thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, holy crap, what am I going to do? So I was told my team, I'm like, team, just start running some Google ads, get it wrong for all I care, just figure it out. And uh, we also hired an agency as well. Um, and when we got back, what we found is that we actually did better than the agency that we paid like thousands and thousands wow. of dollars. And we were like, Hmm, yeah, you know, maybe this is a thing. And then we just started, you know, throwing down in, in YouTube and Google. And um, next thing I know, we were like speaking on that and then people were having someone to talk about it. And we kind of just grew from there. Um, but YouTube though, what we found is that, you know, realistically, like we spend money on all the platforms, but the most profitable one, like you're going to spend a dollar and you want $3 back that's where YouTube lives. So, so that's sort of my journey, like how, how that started. Um, during COVID, we couldn't fly. So we had a lot of people say, Hey, look, can you handle the agency side of it? Um, so we did that, but these days we kind of more focused just on the consulting side of like showing people, I'd much rather teach people how to fish and empower them to mm-hmm. manage their own stuff, um, than do it for them. But we do offer both solutions. I'm, I'm way more passionate about coming in. I mean, even if it's a corporate coming in and just teaching them like their team or whoever, how to, how to do it because then you enable them for life. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how it started to sort of where it is today. That's awesome. I always think it's the coolest when businesses grow organically like that, like specifically out of a need that you just kind of stumble upon and it works, <laughs> which yeah, is awesome. And I was very lucky around the same time. Um, Marcus, my business partner, he was, he was sort of running his own agency and, um, and I was sort of traveling and flying and speaking and stuff. And I was like, Hey man, can you just help my team? manage some of my ads like back then it was Facebook and a bit and we were doing we were transitioning heavy into Google Mm -hmm. and he's like oh I've got some Google experience and he come on and then he was just so good I was like hey man let's join forces and create Titan and and that's where that's where Titan Marketer was originally born so it was a combination of like all of those things all happening at once so that's amazing yeah so for people that are hearing this and think, oh my God, I want that three times ROI, like where do they start? How can they reach out to you? Yeah, great. So, I mean, you just go to titanmarketer.com. We have a whole bunch of free resources. One of the things you'll find in there is some um, profitability calculators. So no matter what you're running, whether you're running like lead gen, whether you're running book a call, whether you're running events or like e-commerce or whatever, there's a calculator in there. Just put the numbers of your business and it'll tell you um, if you're profitable or not and and what sort of return on ad spend that you can, that you should be expecting. Um, if you need some help with that, obviously, um, you know, we, we help people put all that together as well, but if we have some free resources. You should be able to put all that together and figure that out. Uh, so that's step one. If you don't already know, you know, if you've already running, like if you're already like multiple six figures or seven figures, you're probably already going to know roughly what your return on ad spend is because, most businesses can't get there without figuring something along those lines. It might not be perfect, but you'll have a rough idea that, hey, I'm spending 10 grand on ads and we're doing about, you know, 40 grand a month in or 30 or 40 grand a month in sales or something. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, and it might be more like a lot of coaches and consultants and stuff like that. If you're selling high ticket things, it can be anywhere from seven to, you know, 20 or 30 times return on ad spend, right? Depending on what you're selling and how you're doing it and whatever else, right? So um, it really does depend on what you're doing, who you're targeting and how that works. Um, So that's step one, like figure that out first. I know that's got nothing to do with YouTube ads, right? But it's, if you're going to build a skyscraper and you're doing it on shady foundations and it doesn't really matter what you're going to build, you're just going to, and you probably experienced that. I mean, how many business owners here have been running ads, basically got a half cocked idea, have a website up, they throw thousands of dollars of marketing on it and then say, oh, Facebook ads or YouTube ads or whatever ads don't work, right? Without 
really getting the sales process nailed. Mm-hmm. So, um, and we've all done it, you know, um, get to meet a business owner that hasn't, so don't feel bad if that's you listening. Um, but take take the time to just work out like, well, what is the best sales process here, right? And um, you can check that out. I mean, we also run like free trainings. Uh, we're not doing them at the moment, uh, but usually once a week we can get on and ask us any questions and stuff like that. Um, because we know like the, if we can get people who have already started and we can get them up and running, like we can take them from there to there much quicker than, you know, oh, I've not started or whatever. So that's why we try and help people as much as we can on the front end. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's where you can check out. There's a whole bunch of resources, all those ad script templates and everything could be there. Um, I can send you the link just to the, you know, just to the thing if people want to grab it. Um, but yeah, we find that that helps a bit as well. So. Yeah, and we'll have all the links down below so everybody can grab them and check it out. So cool. I can talk about this for days, but I do want to hear about the other side of your business that you have <laughs> with kids, because that's another thing. Personally, I'm very passionate about. I have three kids of my own and tried to teach them every bit of entrepreneurial skill that my husband and I could teach them. We try to instill to them. So tell me about what you're doing with that. Oh, first up, like well done for getting your kids out there and teaching them entrepreneurial skills. I think that's probably one of the most important things that we can teach kids today. Um, and let's face it, they're not learning it at school, right? No. So, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not learning that there. So for us, um, how did that start? Uh, basically, uh, I think I mentioned before, like we sort we were at a sort of a transition space, um, you know, we sold out of a bunch of businesses and things and kind of get to a point where you're like, oh, what do we do now? You know, like we can just sit here and chill, but there's probably something else that we could, that we could do. And um Around the same time, my son, um, who's now 14, uh, was like seven. And he was like, oh, um, can I have pocket money? I was like, no. I was like, <laughs> you can earn it. <laughs> yeah, you can learn how to sell and be like an asset to society. So, um, so yeah, so basically what ended up happening was he had a little bit of money from his grandma and for Christmas and stuff. And we, we planted a herb garden and he would go like, he's a real shy kid back then. And uh you know, like sort of kid that I've got four kids by the way. So, but he was quite shy. Like he, you know, when you go talk to other parents and they like, hi, how are you doing? And they look down. And they really look down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That whole situation. And I was like, you know what I think would solve that cold sales door to door. Just throw them in. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like that might seem real harsh, but it works really well. So, um, and that's what we did. So he had his herbs, he'd package them all up. And then I literally helped him with a script. I'd walk down the road and he would, I'd help him the first couple of doors and then he would go knock on doors and sell his herbs. And what's really amazing is while a lot of people might think that's scary is um, pretty much every single person you talk to, you get an eight year at your door selling herbs and they give you a brochure and they've got a bit of a pitch planned and they sell like crazy. Um, and they'll just buy it off them because they're a kid. Right. And it's just such a good experience for them because they learn that it's okay to sell and that people are happy if you sell to them something that's of value and you can help them in some way, right? Um, so I think that was such a good experience. And then um, next thing I know, I'm like talking about um, this at an internet marketing thing that I was going to and um, we met some people and they're like, oh, hey, would you like to come speak on stage about that? And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where my stage career was born. But um the, the good thing for that was, you know, we were able to get the, the just really empower a lot of kids quite quickly. Um, you know, we're probably seven or eight years in now. We've had, um, you know, we have most kids who get started do over a thousand dollars in their first month. We've got kids who've done, you know, six and seven figure businesses, a bunch of kids who've done over $10,000 a month. We have a whole club for it. Uh, we've got kids buying houses before they're 18. And one of our kids even wrote a book on how I made more money than my principal. I had a phone call the other day. One of our kids is going to be on Shark Tank. So that's it's incredible. Just, it's just crazy. So that's where it's grown to today. Like today, it's just this massive thing. We were able to just really help heaps of kids at scale, which is literally probably one of the most rewarding things that I do. So that is absolutely incredible. Yeah. My middle child uh, started a pressure washing business. So we taught him cold sales, same thing. Like he really struggled with that eye contact and that personal interaction. We're like, all right, here we go. <laughs> this is yep. how you do it. So yeah. Oh, so good. How did he go with it? Did he learn how to sell a bit better? And 
he but did it it definitely helped um he struggled with really he struggled with the, re- the rejection side of it like you know people would get kind of funny and then he wouldn't want to do it so it was it was a mixed bag but uh yeah we'll have to check out your resources and see what you have online because that's yeah, it's amazing yeah, and it cool. helped him tremendously in the personal interaction and just that confidence like being able yeah. to read people you don't stand in their space like there's an art to it that you don't get the door slammed in your face oh it's so good and i think another like if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, man, there's no way my kids can go door to door, right? That's totally fine. Like, hey, look, I don't have to be right about this. Uh, start them off with something a bit gentler like markets, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, you can do a market or a garage sale. I don't do they have them in America. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what they call yep. it. Yeah, garage sales, right? So, um, you know, get people to come to you and and that, and that teach them to sell that way. So, I mean, that's what I've done with my other two kids, like my other kids. Um, so my youngest is five. She doesn't have a business yet, but everyone else does. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. What do you buy kids who've already bought everything that they want for themselves when Christmas comes? It's a quality problem. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, like we, we do, they do some markets and they do a bit of online stuff and whatever, but it's, it is really cool for them to learn how to sell and talk to people. And I think a lot of today's youth have kind of missed out on that a lot, um, with technology and screen time and, and everything as well. So, yeah. But to your point, they don't teach that at school. They sure as heck don't teach it here. And I'm sure they don't teach it there either. So oh, you have to learn so it bad. outside. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a great conspiracy or anything like that. Like I know a lot of people like, yeah, they teach school. Rah. Um, But I mean, at the end of the day, like school's very much like it's built off a traditional system uh, to create employees. That's literally the whole point of school, right? Like to, to get higher skilled labor. And if you go back a little further, like, where the traditional schooling system started was, you know, in um, Prussia back in the day, which is Germany. And they basically, in turn of the re- Industrial Revolution, they just lost a whole bunch of, you know, troops to the Neapolonic Wars or have you pronounced that because their generals couldn't count, right? It's probably something you want to be able to do. And they had that Industrial Revolution going on. So what they ended up doing was they said, right, let's just educate, you know, the masses and we'll put it through parliament and we'll just teach them up to you know, primary school and maybe high school. But, um, and then, man, the Chris, like the, the high level of people like lost their minds. Like we educate everyone. There'll be no class divide, blah, 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 blah. And um, like, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll make like university and college super expensive. So only the wealthy can go there. And this is going back a couple hundred years. And I don't think it's changed much. <laughs> no, <laughs> look around. It hasn't. <laughs> right. So, um, and I mean, for that time, you know, like for the time of creating, you know, better soldiers and better employees, like that was a perfect system, right? The problem is today is that most people, when they step into a career, they don't, that's not a lifelong career for them anymore. Like the world has changed drastically. Uh, most people will do a minimum of three to five careers, you know, in their life. So even if they do get a degree in something, that doesn't mean they're staying there for the long term, right? So, um, so I think this is where, uh, teaching kids what we call we call it the skill set of an entrepreneur right which is teaching people how to turn their ideas into money and look you know if I kind of explain it like this like if Elon Musk Richard Branson or Jeff Bezos went break up tomorrow how long do you think it would be before they are millionaires again right yeah totally well like a month a week you know like pretty pretty quick right um and the reason for that is they if you took everything away from them and even their contacts away from them, they had to go into a third world country or, you know, something like that. I'm pretty sure that they would have some sort of business up and running quite quickly and it would be profitable. Right. And that's because they have that skill set. And this is what we want to teach kids before they finish school is that skill set of, Hey, I can make money here with my brain. Okay. I can find a need. I can add value to people's lives and, and go from there. And then maybe I could do it around something I'm interested in. Now, if you can figure out how to get paid for stuff that you're interested in, you'll never really have to work a day in your life or enter the rat race at all, right? So super, super powerful stuff. And I think what's even more important than that is um, in learning that skill set, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We, you don't have to get an A grade. You just have to get out there and do it. And you can make mistakes as a kid. And it's not the end of the universe when you don't have a mortgage and kids and, and all the other drama, right? And I think what's really cool is we have this thing that we start kids off called the $20 challenge. And they basically start off with $20, nothing else. They just have to turn that into as much money as they can in the first month. And like most kids, like when we first started, they're doing like a couple hundred bucks or something. But most kids today do well over a thousand dollars. Wow. 
right? And I think the record's like 5,500 or something, right? That's awesome. Um, now, these are kids who have no business experience. They have no idea about anything to do with business, okay? Now, as most, if most adults started a business and they're $1,000 up in their first month as a side hustle, like I'm pretty sure they're going to call that a success, right? <laughs> the, the cool thing here is kids can do that and learn a whole bunch of business skills along the way. But what's even more important than that is if you were ever down to your last $20, and you knew how to turn that into even if it was a hundred dollars or a couple hundred dollars, you could literally rid the world of homelessness and hunger and all the rest of it and really learn how to be of service to other people and find value in their lives. Cause let's be honest, money is just an exchange of value, right? Yeah. So, so this is why this is like, I know I'm probably going on a bit, but this is why I'm pretty passionate about teaching kids that skill set and then applying those skills that they learn into something they really want to grow and scale out into a, to a profitable business. So I love it. So you've done a ton. Your business is incredibly successful, obviously, but how do you define success? What does that mean to you? Um, success is one of those loaded questions. That's a, that's a massive question. <laughs> that's why I like to ask it. Everybody's definition is different. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me, like personally, like I have a bit of like a value hierarchy, right? So um to me, like my success for me is that, that all those are aligned properly and that I'm I'm happy with life. So, you know, for example, you know, um, you know, my relationship with, you know, my father in heaven was, you know, is really important. So that would be one. And then it would be like, right, you know, marriage and family, like that's next, right? And then like freedom is next. Like I'm free, I'm doing the things I want to do when I want to do them and I'm having fun, right? Then after that, it might be, you know, um, you know, the traditional, like, you know, um, you know, the, the money or not even money, but probably just more that that would come under the freedom side of life. Right. So, um, but money is just a tool at the end of the day. So success and health, sorry, health is above up near family. So I've kind of got this all around the wrong way. So spirituality, health, and then relationships and, um, you know, networks and community, that sort of thing. And um, the network community side is very much where like youth in business lives for me. Like how do you, if you've got the other pillars all sorted out, like how do you then pass the torch on, if that makes sense? So, um, yeah, so success for me is that all of that's aligned and I'm certainly not going to pr- profess to be perfect or whatever and have it all quite figured out. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think you know, <sighs> I don't know, like I think being happy, happy with the way that you're living your life and serving others is probably like if you were to sum it up in a sentence and whatever happiness means for you would be, that would be my definition of success. So it's certainly not not wrapped around anything, anything, if that makes sense. So a bigger house, a nicer boat, a bigger holiday, none of that. Yeah. Um, so. No, yeah, I, anyway. I love that. And that it's so important to have them aligned, like, especially in the order that <laughs> you have a friend behind you in the order that you mentioned, uh, <laughs> he's welcome to join. <laughs> no, it's all good. That's okay. You're all good. Um, no, just in the order that you mentioned, I think is, is, um, increases that success even more, you know, with your faith, your relationships, your family, and, you know, your health and all of that, like they, without each of those, um, you can be lost, right? Like you need all of them working together to really have yourself at a place where you want to be, which I think is awesome. Yeah. So actually I'll share something a little personal if it's okay. Um, sure. What I what I like to do is kind of track it, right? Because just having an analytical brain and doing marketing, like if you can't measure it, you can't really manage it, right? So mm-hmm. this is kind of like each week I'll measure my thing. Um, so for me, I sort of measure my the way that I'm tracking in four different dimensions. So um, physical, emotional, spiritual, mental, mental, and I give myself like a out of percentage out of a hundred. Where am I tracking, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, like physical will be things like you know uh, my health, and but also under physical will be like, well, do we have to do em- enough money to the things that I would call myself free? You know, right. um, yeah. Emotional would be like, how am I tracking emotionally? Uh, spiritually would be like, well, have I received any inspiration in the last twenty four hours? Sort of deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mental would be, you know, can I? Uh, mentally achieve the things I want to achieve or do I need to have some education around stuff that's blocking me, right? And I do that every week and I just like write down a percentage of those and I can quickly track like when things are off and what's going on. Um, But then the other thing that I'll do is 
uh, I've just added one in the last uh, couple of months, which is like, uh, this is a harder one is like out of a hundred, where do you think you, you're sitting compared to what your potential was last week? Mm. Like if your potential was a hundred last week, you know, how much of it did you hit out or were you being lazy? Wow. And uh, so for me, like that was actually a really hard start. And um, you know, I started off at like five percent or something <laughs> like that. Uh, you know, when you see it, when you have to sit down and be like, hey, what is what is your potential here? Um, yeah. And you, you know, and you actually think about that once a week. It's it's actually quite a daunting task. So it's slowly on the rise, but uh, I don't think I've hit like twenty percent yet. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe I'm just a little hard on myself, but the um that that is a massive stat to measure. So I mean that's you know, in terms of success, how do I measure it? Like I, I don't have, like my answer probably before wasn't like super clean, um, but that's probably a way that I do try and track and measure, you know, how I'm tracking and, and whatever else. So. I love that. And I think so many people, you know, I ask that question a lot to a lot of people and rarely do I get a number, right? Like people don't want to hit that number. They want to have personal, you know, inspirational success, but I think rarely do we actually track that, which I think is pretty awesome that you do to give yourself that visual. And I'm a data geek. So, you know, of course I enjoy that very much, but <laughs> but being able to to track that personal fulfillment and see progress in your life, I think is really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, I mean, that that's probably a very long answer to like how I define success and measure it. But um, yeah, like I, I think it sort of hit me one time. I was at like, I don't know if it was a, it was some sort of like mindset retreat or something and they had like the wheel of success or something crazy up there. And, and like, seriously, I'm not your mindset guru, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, I was like, oh, I think that's good. But for me, there's just too many things going on on that thing, right? Like I was like, how would I simplify that out to like four things or three things or something? And um, and, and that's kind of how I've been rolling. And uh, I have to admit, like, you know, we measure everything else in life from our bank balance to our balance sheets to our, you know, um, weight into whatever else. But like, when was the last time you really checked in and was like, well, how am I personally tracking with the things I found by valuable in the world? So. Love it. Very cool. So if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would you say? That's an aw- you ask awesome <laughs> questions. Well, thank you. Um, I have to admit, like, I've done lots of podcast interviews and your questions are amazing. So thank you. Uh, a whole world for five minutes, what would I say? Um, I would probably talk about, like, if I could make some impact in something that I feel like I have enough knowledge to impart on the whole world about, like, I don't feel there's lots of topics that people would be better to speak to the whole world than me, right? So, you know, um, however, I do think that I'm probably one of the best, if not the best at teaching kids how to start businesses. <laughs> so I would probably uh, talk about that. Um, the reason is, you know, like marketing, I could talk about marketing, but let's be real, there's lots of marketers out there right. um, and different things. And uh, I think the biggest impact that I could probably make uh, to people on a topic that I felt like I knew enough to talk to the whole world about, if the whole world was listening, like that's a lot of pressure. It is. Uh, <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't want to talk about God or spirituality unless you were like, you know, Buddha or Jesus or something, you know, like that's a, <laughs> that's a massive topic. Um, so while I think there's many important things that I'd like to talk to the world about, I think I'd probably have to stick in my wheelhouse of like expertise and the most amount of change I think I could make. Um, mm-hmm. so with that caveat, if I can, um, I would probably say, Hey, look, guys, we're not teaching kids how to be entrepreneurs anymore. Like we're literally just teaching kids how to be, um, not slaves, but swap their time for dollars. Uh, and, basically enter a rat race they're probably going to hate for the rest of their lives right so why not why not free the next generation and teach them entrepreneurship and even if they become the next doctor or lawyer or whatever they can start a practice in it and help more people and i think um, i'm very entrepreneurial driven and i think that if we could have more entrepreneurs who could serve and help people at a higher level the world would be a better place so in that vein i would probably scream from the rooftops about how kids should get out there and learn entrepreneurial skills, learn how to sell, learn how to hold themselves, learn how to take their lives into their own hands and literally change the world for the better. Love it. That's so powerful. And I think the more we can help change the lives of kids, you're right. It changes the whole world because that's the next generation. Very cool. 
Well, thank you so much. How can listeners support you and your work? Where can they find you online? I know you mentioned a couple of places earlier and I'll have all the links down below. Sure, sure. No, thank you. Um, yeah, look, if you want to connect on uh, the YouTube side of life, uh, just go to Titan Marketer. There's free resources, free training, all sorts of cool stuff that you can go check out. Um, like I said, we just want to help as many people as we can. Uh, on the youth in business side, like teaching kids how to be entrepreneurial, look, head over to youthinbusiness.com. So titanmarketer.com, like, now, it's Titan Marketer ER, not Titan Marketing. So it's mm. like Titan Marketer with an ER.com gotcha. and uh, and Youth in Business. So youthinbusiness.com. Again, there'll be some free training and 101 free ideas kids can get started with and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you'll be able to see all the different videos and different case studies and all the different things that we've been able to do over the years. Um, but like, just get started. Like, I cannot stress this enough. Like, whether you want to looking at, YouTube ads to help grow your business to multiple six or seven figures or just even if you to get a three times return or whatever. Like just get started with something. Set, you know, 10 minutes aside in your day or whatever and, and figure that skill set out. Um, particularly if you're running paid ads right now, it's literally the biggest opportunity around. So if you're not running YouTube ads and you're running them on other platforms, you're literally like burning money. So I would go figure that out. The other one would be like if you want to start with youth in business stuff, like just get started. Like if your kid's entrepreneur, whether they do our stuff or not or whatever, like just get started, just get them out there, like find something they're passionate about and get them out there, Let, teach them how to sell. Like teaching kids how to sell is probably the most important thing ever. You know, life is just one big long course of sales. Like, you know, from whether you're like looking for a promotion to getting married to, you know, getting what you want in the world, you, you need to learn how to sell, right? So, um, and I think like that is a skill that I wish I had learned earlier, you know? So, um, yeah, so I guess... That's pretty much my, the two places you check me out, tightmarketer.com or youthinbusiness.com. If you want to connect with me somewhere on social, um, you know, I have all the different social media accounts. The one I'm probably on that I check the most is probably LinkedIn. Um, so you can look me up on LinkedIn, but, you know, Ben Jones or Benjamin Jones is tricky to look up. So um, there's only one million trillion of us out there. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so you'd probably just go to the websites, reach out. And I'm happy to help you guys with whatever question you might have, or if you need some free resources or whatever, but whatever it is, get started, make an impact on your life today. And um, hopefully I've been able to help you in some way. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. This was awesome having you on today. Really appreciate it. Ah, that's cool. No, th and thank you for having me, Julie. And um, I appreciate like all the people's attention who's, li who's listened to the podcast interview this far. Um, you yeah, know, well done. <laughs> So. <laughs> exactly and if you found value in this episode please do share it because that's how people find us and you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com and i look forward to seeing you on the next episode